I said just a just a quick uh, recap first. Okay, uh, what we were doing, we started with ions and formulas, and uh, we did all these equations. Okay, and we had just started talking about moles. So, okay, we had we had started talking about moles, and we did uh, two formulas. One was one of them was uh, moles is the amount of particles divided by the Avogadro's constant, TK, and the other one was moles is equal to mass divided by AR or MR. And then uh, we talked about significant figures, TK, and we talked about solutions, N is equal to CV, which is, uh, which is uh, concentration is equal to moles over volume. For gases, I told you that uh, the formula is moles is volume of gas divided by 24 dmq but i told you that uh, you have to be careful that if it's at rtp or not so i wrote down all these formulas over here uh, which you're already familiar with and uh, uh finding moles tk we discussed each one of those formulas and we had started talking about equations that when you when you're dealing with moles Moles is simply a unit for counting. It's like a billion or a trillion or a dozen. These are all units for counting. So you count your atoms and you count your molecules in moles. And what an equation tells you, I think this was the this was the last thing that we were doing. Uh, so the equation tells you the ratio in which different substances are reacting. TK it's like a recipe. So, for example, you've got two aluminiums reacting with six HCLs, and they're going to produce two AlCl3s and three H2 molecules. Uh, so, your atoms, you're counting your atoms in moles. So, if, you, if you've got 1.5 moles of Al, then the amount of HCl that's going to be produced is going to be in the same ratio. It's two ratio six, so it's going to be 1.5 is going to produce, uh, it's going to react with 4.5. And according to the same ratio, it's going to be producing 1.5 moles and 2.25 moles of this thing tk so hopefully everyone knows how to use ratios uh the simple way is uh if you and you can use any of the if you know the moles of any of the substance you can figure out the moles of all the other substances in the equation so we did a, so we did a few questions on that last time and i'm just going to repeat a few questions just uh, let's let's make a just a second i said let's just make another random equation. He can, let's make an equation related to there is a uh, ammonium, uh, ammonium phosphate. So NH4 is plus one, PO4 is minus three. So it's going to be NH4, three, PO4 plus reacting with calcium hydroxide. So calcium is two plus OH is minus one, and it's going to produce salt water and uh, ammonia. So water plus NH three plus the salt that's going to be produced in this case is going to be calcium and phosphate. That's Ca three and PO four twice. Ca is two plus PO four is minus three. So that's that's what our reaction is. TK, we did this as well. Emma, the was are you? Yes, sir. So this reaction, remember any equation that you're, that you're dealing with in a moles question, it has to be a balanced equation. So to just to balance this, calcium is three. So there should be three calcium hydroxides. Uh, there's two PO4s. So you multiply this by two. Uh, there would be six NH3s and there's going to be six water molecules. So that's your recipe. I mean, you have the quantities the whole number ratio. An equation always tells you the simplest whole number ratio in which things would react and in which things are going to be produced. So it's two of these would react with three of these and together they're going to produce, uh, they're going to produce uh, one of this molecule, six of this and six of this. So based on this, you've got, uh, uh, just one minute, TK. There's Azan, TK. Just one minute break for the Azan. I said, sorry, TK, sorry. Uh, 
we can now talk about this equation, TK. So I'm, I'm just going to give you a random number just for uh, revising what we did last time. So you've got uh, 0 0.5 moles of ammonium phosphate. Can anyone tell me what amount of calcium hydroxide would react with it according to the ratio? 0.75. TK, so this is going to be 0 0.75 moles. TK, so a simple way of using ratios is 0 0.5 divided by 2 into 3. That would give you 0 0.75. Can tell me uh, what's the moles of calcium? Cost of what's the moles for calcium phosphate? 0.25. TK, that's going to be 0 0.25 moles according to the ratio. And uh, then it's what about water in NH3? One. Not one. It's uh I mean you can use any of the moles for one for the TK, so it's gonna be one point one point five. Uh exactly. So water would be one point five moles and this other one would also be one point five moles. Now remember all your moles questions are simply this. You find the moles of one substance, you find the moles of all the other substances. The rest is just formulas. TK, for example, if somebody is asking you for, to find the volume of the gas, NH3 gas, you can apply a formula. If you if they're asking you to find the mass of 1.5 moles of H2, you can use a formula. If they're asking you to find the concentration, you can just use the formula. But basically, every moles question is simply this. You find the moles of one substance, you find the moles of all the other substances. That's it. Uh, and in a similar way, very similar to this, there's going to be a thing called uh, limiting and excess reactants. Sometimes what would happen is you'll be given two moles. So we're going to cover limiting and excess reactants as well very quickly. Okay, what's, what is limiting and excess? Now, Lim uh, I'll, I'll tell you what excess is. Excess is more than the required amount. Sometimes you're going to add a substance more than the required amount. Not so there would be so it's not going to fully react in the reaction. You just added too much of it, and there wasn't enough uh, uh, of the other reactants available for it to react. So it's not going to be completely react. Uh, never use this mole. I mean, whatever moles are given for the excess reactant, you're never going to use them in your reaction because they're not the ones that are reacting. Like, for example, if you, if you add 100, if you, I'll, I'll take an example, for example. Let's do the simplest one, uh, one ratio one. It's anyway, it's reacting with HCl and it produces NaCl and H2O, right? So the equation is telling us that all of them, they react in one ratio one and they get produced in one ratio one as well. So if you've got 10 NaOH, it's going to react with 10 HCLs and it's going to produce 10 NaCLs and 10 water molecules. So that's that's the same ratio. Everything has the same ratio. So what if I tell you that I, that I have, uh, let's say 40 moles of NaOH and I have 15 moles of HCL. Can anyone quickly tell me which one has been added in excess? Which one is not going to fully take part in the reaction? Sodium hydroxide. So sodium hydroxide is obviously in excess. Uh, what amount would actually take part in the reaction? Like 15 would react with how much? It's one ratio one, right? So that means only 15 would react because it's one ratio one. 15 moles are going to react with 15 moles. Uh, 40 is too much. It's It wasn't even required. So that means uh, 25 moles are in excess. I mean, they're not, e they're not even needed in the reaction and they're not going to take part in the reaction. Only 15 are going to take part in the reaction. So you're never going to use the excess moles. Remember, in your calculations, excess moles are never used because they are, they are in excess and they're not fully taking part in the reaction. So, so this 40 is never going to feature in your calculations. Uh, you're, going to, you're going to use the moles that are actually taking part in the reaction. Uh, is this clear to everyone? Anna, is this clear, Alicia? Yes. Sure. Haji. I'm clear.
ऊपर आपने लिखे नेवर यूज दिस मोल मतलब हम ये 40 मोल नहीं यूज करेंगे हां मतलब हां मतलब एक तो ये कि फर्स्ट थिंग यू हैव टू आइडेंटिफाई व्हिच वन इज एक्सेस मतलब फॉर एग्जांपल फॉर एग्जांपल इफ यू डिड नो कि व्हिच वन वाज एक्सेस राइट और तो and somebody had asked you about nacl moles ke how many moles of nacl would be produced you could have used the ratio and you could have used the wrong ratio like you could have used ke one nuh produces one nacl so 40 moles would produce 40 nacl right which would be wrong am i clear and why is this wrong yes kyunki the problem is ke 40 are never going to take part in the reaction only 15 are going to take part in the reaction so that means 15 would react with 15 and the amount of moles that are going to be produced are going to be 15 moles so in your calculation all your calculations would be done using the limiting reactant the one that is taking fully uh, that is fully taking part in the reaction all your calculations would be done using the limiting reactant the excess moles ka jo number hai na that's never going to be used in the in the reaction theek hai is this clear to everyone is a small concept is this clear yes बहुत क्लियर है अच्छा सो अच्छा बट दिस वाज वेरी इजी दिस वाज इजी व्हाई बिकॉज इट वाज वन रेशियो वन इट वाज ऑब्वियस दैट 40 मोल्स इन इज इन एक्सेस नाउ ऑन द अदर हैंड व्हाट इफ द रेशियो इज अ स्लाइटली मोर कॉम्प्लिकेटेड लाइक यू यू गॉट लेट्स से यू गॉट कैल्शियम ऑक्साइड प्लस फास्फोरिक एसिड एंड दे रिएक्टिंग and the reaction to produce calcium phosphate plus water so let's say you have this reaction and the ratio is kind of more complicated it's three calcium oxide two phosphoric acid molecules and you've got uh, three water molecules now if i give you two numbers like uh, i'm taking these two things and i've got uh, 50 moles of this and i've got uh, i've got uh, let's say uh, 40 moles of this can anyone tell me which one has been added more than the required amount like which one out of the two is in excess i've i've took i've took 50 moles of calcium oxide and i'm reacting it with 40 moles of phosphoric acid anyone can you can anyone do ratios and tell me what would 50 react with maybe phosphoric acid hmm kaso what's your question uh phosphoric acid theek hai phosph uh, that's right phosphoric acid is the one that's in excess as in now the first thing is <clears throat> remember the thing thing that's in larger quantity that's not always the one that's in excess uh which one is in excess it's the one that's more than the required amount so so if you use ratios you would notice uh, can somebody tell me what the ratio is like 3 reacts with 2 so 50 would react with how much according to the ratio it's going to be 50 divided by 3 into 2 what value do you get what's 50 divided by 3 into 2 Uh, 33.3 कितना 30 33.33 तो इसका मतलब यू डोंट यू डोंट नीड 40 मोल्स यू जस्ट नीडेड 33.33 मोल्स ठीक है 50 वाज वाज गोइंग टू रिएक्ट विद 50 वाज गोइंग टू रिएक्ट विद 33.33 मोल्स सो मतलब यू नेवर नीडेड 40 मोल्स 40 मोल्स was more than the required amount you never needed it this was an excess theek hai you added too much of it so you cut that out theek hai never use these in your calculation um uh, and if the ratio is more complex so how do you identify which one is an excess the way you go there's a simple uh, shortcut and there's a simple technique i mean one is you can use ratios and you can then figure out that 50 is going to react with 33.33 right so you would realize that uh, 40 is too much you you don't need that much in your in your reaction mahad is this clear mariam is this clear adisha yes acha so so that's one way of doing that but the slightly simpler method because 
because if you don't identify which one is in excess, you wouldn't be able to find the moles of uh, calcium phosphate or water because uh, whose moles are you going to use? Are you going to use 50 or are you going to use 40? TK, so you're not going to use the one that's in excess. So how do you identify which one is excess? The shortcut is, uh, do just, uh, I mean, you don't have to write this, uh, I mean, on the paper. What you can do is you take 50 divided by its ratio, which is 3. TK, so take 50. Divide it, divide it by its ratio. You take 40, divide that by its ratio. The number that's bigger, that's the one that's in excess. So 50 divided by 3 would probably give you 16 something. 40 divided by 2 would give you 20. So this is a bigger number. That means this value is in excess. So all your calculations would be done using this one. You're not going to use this in your, in your reaction. It's in excess. Okay, so without doing the ratio, this is the simplest shortcut. 50 divided by 3, 40 divided by 2. The bigger the, the bigger number is the one that's in excess. Uh, do another example. Let's do another example. We have, uh, let's say I have aluminum oxide and I've got uh, six HCLs reacting with it. And I've got uh, two HCL3s being produced. And plus there is three H2 gas molecules, right? So here's a reaction. And I've been told that there is 0 0.15 moles of this. And there's uh, 1.2 moles of this. Now, and these two are mixed together. And we, we're supposed to find the moles of ALCL3 and H2. So which one is the one that's in excess? The shortcut is, you just take pick 0.15, divide it by its ratio, which in this case is 1. Like you, it's it's 1, there's nothing next to it. And you take 1.2 and you divide it by its ratio, which is 6. So which one is the, which one, which one is coming out to be the smaller number? Or the bigger number? Like this is 0.15 obviously. Can, I don't know in case it is in it. TK, this comes out to be 0 0.2, right? Yes. yes. So, so this one is the bigger number. That means this is the one that's in excess. You're never going to use these moles. Uh, because according to the ratio even, uh, 0.15 is going to react with, uh, one reacts with 6. So what's 0.15 into 6? That would be, I think, 0 0.9 moles, right? Yeah, yes. So you, you never needed 1.2 moles. That was a lot more than the required amount. So it was, so so you never, if you're trying to find the moles of ALCL3 and H2, you're going to pick the limiting reactant. Use ratios using the limiting reactant, not not the one that's in excess. Okay, so just remember this. So uh, so coming back to this, it's, it's very easy to find the one that's in excess if you're given two moles, both moles. TK, so which moles would you use? The one that's in limiting reactant. Cut out the excess one. And the simple method is take the moles divided by its ratio, take the moles divided by its ratio, and the one that's coming out to be bigger, that's the one that's in excess. TK, is this clear to everyone? I guess. Achha, so, so coming back to this, remember all your moles questions are simply this apart from limiting in excess if that's a question but if you find the moles of any one of the substances uh, you can use that to find the moles of all the substances in the equation the rest is simply it's simply formulas so uh, and you've got four formulas working for you so what I'm going to do is uh, Because we have to practice questions, what we can do is we can, uh, I'll send you some questions or we can simply jump and start solving questions. Just one second, let me upload the worksheet as well. Because it's more about past paper questions, especially moles. I'm assuming that most of you are familiar with moles. So just one second. So I've, in this worksheet, I've divided all the questions uh, topic-wise. Just one second, where's the most topic? So 
probably this one just one second so all of them are divided topic wise so we can we can go through them topic wise and there would be different types of most questions uh, so there might be a table of content which is this okay so all kinds of most questions so we're going to go through this worksheet and the past paper questions and solve them one by one the first one would be kind of easy so and let's try and do this over here so that's that's a that's a first question uh, remember you have to know what a balanced equation is you must be able to write a balanced equation so for example the first one is let me just open a marker now the first thing is I and mean, that's why equations are very important because the equations and balanced equations and making those equations it has to be on your fingertips you have to practice a lot so there's a thermal decomposition of calcium nitrate that's happening so you should know what happens when a nitrate decomposes what it does is calcium is 2 plus NO3 is minus 1 so it's going to be calcium nitrate uh, CNO3 twice a metal oxide is formed an NO2 gas molecule is formed and an oxygen gas molecule is formed so that's that's what my balanced equation is not a balanced equation I need to balance it so if I try to balance it calcium is already balanced uh, NO3 is twice N so that means there are two ends so there would be two ends over here and on the left side there's six oxygen so I can make this one half so now I have a decomposition equation where I have calcium nitrate that's decomposing. Remember the rule is you find the moles of any one of the substances, you'll be able to figure out the moles of all the substances by just using ratios. So, and you've got your four formulas working for you. Uh, for now, I mean, we haven't done empirical formula. We haven't talked about yield yet. Uh, so right now you've got 4.1 grams of this thing. Anhydrous simply means without water. That means salts have water molecules in, in them as well. Like you, uh, a lot of salts can be written as uh, CNO3 twice dot XH2O or dot 5H2O. Anhydrous simply means that it's without water. So you've got you've got 4.10 grams of this thing. And what is he asking? He's saying what mass of solid residue can be obtained. So this is a gas. This is a gas. The only thing that's solid is this thing. So remember the question is going to be solved first thing you can find the moles of calcium nitrate uh, so try and find the moles of calcium nitrate how would you do that it's going to be mass divided by the mr molecular mass so it's going to be 4.10 divided by the mr now i told you previously you have to be very good uh, at calculating mr now you have to be a little bit more precise just a second let me open the data booklet Where is this one? So just type 9701 and a data booklet would open up. This is going to be with you in your exam. Take it somewhere at the end, there's a pure table. This one. Now, for a lot of you people, uh, finding the MR of calcium nitrate, you might remember calcium is 40 and it's 14 oxygen 16. But this was where I told you to be very, very careful because uh, now your pure table is kind of more accurate, which means that in O levels, calcium was 40, but now it's actually 40.1. It's kind of more accurate. Uh, you also have to check for nitrogen as well because now your values are kind of more accurate. So nitrogen is still 14 and oxygen is still 16, uh, but now it's accurate up to one decimal place. So if you try to find the MR, it's going to be 40.1. Don't forget to use that 40.1 because in your MCUs, it doesn't really matter, but uh, still make it a habit. Uh, don't round it off, use 40.1. And there are two NO3, so that's 14 plus 16 into three, that's uh, 48 plus 14, that's 62 times two. So that's 124. I mean, this is calcium nitrate. TK, NO3 is twice, so this is 62 and twice can anyone tell me what the moles are for calcium nitrate for 
4.10 divided by this thing, which is 164.1, I think. I can. Do you even do this? Yes, the mode are 0 0.032. Because I have 164.1. I'm, I'm getting this. Can can you redo this? Yes, I got the same answer. I said now, now this is also very important because a lot of times you're going to make a lot of mistakes on your calculator. Remember, use brackets in your calculator. I mean, if you if you want to write this expression. Tell the calculator exactly what you're trying to do. Like if I if I want to write the like how do I just once again do this one. So like if I want to write this expression, I'm going to use brackets. It's four point one zero divided by uh, put brackets, and then it's going to be forty point one plus one twenty four. I mean you can you can see the expression at the top and. So make sure you use brackets properly. Uh, you have to clearly tell because the calculator is, calculator is pretty bad at it, understanding your expressions. So you have to be very, very careful when you're using your calculator. And then I also talked about, remember I also talked about, it doesn't really matter in MCQs. In theory, it's going to matter because in MCQs, uh, you just have to come up with the right answer. Uh, you don't even have to show you're working. But in your theory questions, you'll be asked to show your working. So you're getting this pretty long answer. So remember, I told you something about the accuracy or the how many significant figures is this? Like how how accurate is this value up to how many significant figures? It's mm -hmm. one, it's three, right? It's one, two, and you're you're also sure that the second decimal place is also a zero. So that's accurate up to three significant figure. So if your if your measurement is accurate up to three significant figure, now your answer can't be it it cannot possibly be more accurate than that. So you would have to round it off to the to the third one, which would make it I think 0 0.0250. I think maybe 49 would get rounded off to. So it would make it 0 0.025, 0 0.0250, right? And these are the moles that we are getting. And he was talking about the solid residue. Remember to understand the question properly. The solid residue, ignore the gases. He's talking about this one. It's one ratio one. So this one would also be point zero two five zero moles. And he was asking about the mass of the solid residue. So how do you find mass? Uh, again, it's moles equal to mass divided by MR. So moles multiplied by MR would give you mass. So multiply this thing by the MR of this thing, uh, which is going to be calcium and oxygen. So if I open the calculator, it's going to be, I would have to multiply this thing with the uh, water, with the put brackets. And it's a uh, calcium is 40.1 plus 16.0 and brackets closed and equal and that gives me 1.4016 and again I'm going to round it off to three significant figures uh, because that's I mean, my answer cannot be more accurate than the value that I'm using so it's going to be C. So is this question clear? Yes. Okay, so it's going to be C. Now what I'm I mean, the question is kind of simple. A lot of people find this easy, but what I'm actually trying to focus on is, is one is when you're doing this question, uh, use the exact value that's given in the period table. If it's 40.1, keep using 40.1. If you, I mean, don't go go according to your memory. Like if, if there was magnesium, magnesium is no longer 24. Uh, you have to look at the 
exact value. Everything is in decimals now. So use the exact value. Magnesium is 24.3. Uh, potassium is no longer 39, it's 39.1. So use, because you're going to lose marks for this. Uh, not in MCQs, because uh, in MCQs, you don't have to show the working, but especially in your theory and your practicals, you're going to lose marks for this. The other thing I was talking about was the significant figures. Like if your original value is accurate up to three significant figure, your answer simply cannot be more accurate than that. I mean, it can't be accurate up to 20 decimal places. I mean, your original values, I mean, you're not even sure about the original value, like what comes after zero? Is it 4.101 or is it 4.1012? I mean, you're, you're not, I mean, your accuracy stops at the second decimal place. So your answer cannot be more accurate than three significant figures. So you have to stop at that point. You have to round it round at the third one. Another small point which I probably did not discuss earlier is, and that is, if you look carefully, when I wrote on the paper, I, I wrote 0 0.0250, right? Uh, but in my calculator, if I can show you, I can't really show you. I mean, if you if you look at the working over here, I'm not using I'm not using 0 0.0250 actually. Uh, I'm using the 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 huge number that I got. TK, so so remember this one tiny detail as well, and that is, don't round values at every step. Like if your calculator is giving this huge number, keep using that number. TK, take it forward. Do another calculation with that. Then you get another long value, unless you have to write the answer on a piece of paper you round it off to three significant figures. But don't round off values on your calculator because then you're going to lose. Like if, if something has, if some calculation has three steps and every time you round off values, your answer would become, it, there's going to be an error in your answer. It's going to start deviating uh, further and further away from the actual value. So don't round off values on your calculator. TK, make sure you use the highest accurate possible value. Like if, if there was another step and I had to use this value, I'm not going to use 1.40. I'm going to use this entire thing. Like if I, if I let's say if, if they were asking for some other calculation based on this one, then I would keep using this value. Only when I have to write on the paper, then I'm going to round the value up to three significant figures. TK, so just make sure, make it a habit. Uh, there's no point. Uh, don't round values at every step because your final answer would start to deviate from the original value. I mean, like over here, you saw that we got exactly 1.40. Uh, if you had done any of the mistakes, like if you hadn't used 40.1, or if you had started rounding off values at every step, then the answer would have started deviating just a little bit. Not that much, but just a little bit. Is this point clear to everyone? Clear? Here? Yeah. Emma, Kosa, is this clear? Aisha, Alicia? I'm clear. As a next. Okay. Yes. So, uh, uh, we examples carry on. Yeah. Abhi old examples carry on. Ha ha, you have to do worksheet. Okay, sir. Okay. I said this one. I said, uh, as I remember for MCUs as well, uh, just make sure that every year now you have another data booklet. So there's there's one, one second. I said everywhere you every year you have new data booklets is, issued. So there's one problem that these values even in the periodic table they kind of deviate every year. Uh, so I mean this data booklet probably belongs to I mean there must be a year given somewhere. Here, not sure about the year, but uh, just remember that uh, every year uh, your values are kind of different, so your answers in MCUs at least would kind of deviate. As anyways, you've got this question, and, and this question is saying that uh, there's a combustion of fossil fuels. It's a major source of increasing atmospheric carbon dioxide with a consequential rise in global warming. Another significant contribution. Remember, uh, a lot of questions have really long stories. Uh, so another significant contribution to carbon dioxide levels comes from the thermal decomposition of limestone. You should know what limestone is. Limestone is calcium carbonate. And thermal decomposition of limestone is 
it breaks down into metal oxide plus carbon dioxide. Okay, this is what happens. So he's saying that um, cement works roast 1,000 million tons of limestone per year and a further 200 million tons is roasted in kilns. So that means that's a total of 1,200 million tons. Okay, so it's 1,200 million tons that's being roasted. And you're being asked, what is the total annual mass output of carbon dioxide? So you're being asked to find the mass of this of this thing. Now, one thing is your formulas deal with grams. There's, there's one thing that you could do is you can convert a million tons to grams, but that's going to be tedious because a million is 10 power 6. A ton contains uh, 10 power 6 grams. I mean, you have to remember this as well. Like, uh, like a kg has a kg has a thousand grams, which I'm sure you're sure of, and a ton has one thousand kgs. So that's like thousand into thousand grams. So that's uh, one million grams. As anyways, in this question, you don't have to actually convert to do the conversion. You can just use 1200 grams solve the answer and whatever mass that you get just write million tons next to it so the first thing is find the moles it's mass divided by the molar mass which in this case would be 40.1 plus this 12 plus 16 into 3 so that's kind of like uh like 100.1 so what is so we'll find the moles mass divided by mr so it's going to be it's going to be 1200 divided by 100.1. So I'm just going to include that. And I get 11.988 moles. And uh, carbon dioxide is one ratio one. So carbon dioxide would have exactly the same moles. So it's going to be exactly the same mole. It's one ratio one. So whatever moles I get for calcium, uh, carbon dioxide would have exactly the same moles. The and how do you find the mass of carbon dioxide? That's that's going to be moles multiplied by MR. So I have the moles. I'm just going to multiply it by the MR. And so that's going to be the MR. Put the MR in brackets. So that's going to be 12 plus uh, 2 oxen. So that's 16 plus 16. And that gives me 527.47 million tons. Do you get, remember, I'm just solving it in grams. I'm not converting into million tons. Whatever mass I'm getting, I'm just converting that into million tons or writing that in million tons. So, so since my answer is going to be accurate up to three significant figures, it's going to be 527. TK, is this clear? Yes, sir. So, okay. uh, let's continue with these questions tomorrow then, TK. I'll send the worksheet as well. Uh, try and do the first subtopic. I'm, I'm sending the worksheet on uh, 